Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Ross Simmons, who's the founder of White on Rice. Ross, welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Mike. Well, it's afternoon for me. Uh, might be more funny for you, but hey, thanks, thanks for having me. Yep, on the show. you're halfway across the world, and uh, that's awesome that we can connect up here uh, using technology and and learn from what you're doing. And I'm excited to talk to you because, boy, uh, it's not often you talk to a company that makes money doing origami. I thought that was just something you do it as a kid when you're bored at the restaurant. And how cool is it that uh, you have turned that into a business? So I want to hear all about it. Get us started with your story. What's your entrepreneurial journey up to this point in your career mm, thank you yeah so like you said i mean nobody really sets out to become an origami artist well i certainly didn't i come from a web development background i was working in advertising for quite a few years uh had a technical understanding of, of a lot of things uh but i always found myself dabbling with very random things origami being one of them been into music and sound and movies and film i love as well and I decided in 2014 that I wanted to get better at origami. I had it as a hobby. It was just something I wanted to do more regularly than I was doing. So I decided to set myself a goal of creating one different origami figure every day for an entire year. Mm. Uh, and that I decided to post onto Instagram. It was just a way of keeping a digital, I guess, record of what I'd folded and, and created. So I found a whole bunch of designs in books online on uh, YouTube and and whatever I could whatever I could get my hands on and I started on this little origami project and it honestly it was just this thing that I was just posting every day I this was in 2014 so day one of of 365 was the first little thing I posted on the first of January uh, 2014 I was still working a day job in advertising building websites not really enjoying it that much mm. um and as the year went on I decided I was going to quit my job um. Fortunately, the work that I was doing as uh, as a web developer, I had a lot of freelance work coming in. So that kind of sorted me out. You know, you don't just quit your job and then like, hey, I'm going to go fold paper for a living. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, so I decided, cool, let's just carry on with uh, the project. And the freelance work came in. That was around April. And as, as the year went on and, and the more I sort of posted onto my Instagram account, people started approaching me to say, hey, whether it was via Instagram itself or people that I knew that were following me said, really enjoying this origami project you're doing. Um, would you be open to doing some some work with us? I was like, okay, work. I'm not too sure what that means. So the first job I ever got was I created an origami uh, pig curtain. It was like a, a whole bunch of little origami pigs as an installation for a retail store. So I created that and they paid me for it. I was like, wow, I just made money from doing my hobby. This is amazing. Yeah, The same client came back to me and did the same thing. Um, and I th I thought, you know, even at that time, I wasn't totally convinced that this was a business at all. But I just kept on posting onto Instagram and kept on just focusing on getting this project done. And to cut a long story short, by the end of the year, uh, and, and towards the end of the year, what I started dabbling in or with is origami and uh, stop motion animation. So I'm an animator as well. Again, something I just learned from watching tutorials and reading books. Uh, stop motion animation uh, is, I guess, you know, the, the claymation, if you've ever seen it, or um, any animation that you've seen where it's like, take a photo, move the object, take a photo, move the object. It's a series of photos. It's a very tedious process, but beautifully sort of crafted at the end of it. So I started mixing origami with stop frame animation and started telling these little stories and posting them onto social media. Um, by the end of the year, I was fortunate enough to get uh, featured in quite a lot of places. I, I grew my following to uh, at that stage was just over 50,000 uh, followers, which was amazing for me. I was just, you know, I just set out to create your one thing every day for an entire year. Um, and then brands started approaching me to say, hey, listen, we really enjoy what you've done with um, this animation you created. Would it be possible to create something for our brand? And they'd send me a logo or some sort of um, emblem that they had and said, cool, is it possible to design this in origami or out of paper and animate it and tell a story? And when I when I cottoned onto that, I was like, wow, this is something I could use way you know, way beyond the boundaries of origami because now animating and adding sound and music, which is all something I've been into for four years, um, just made sense for me to try and give it a go. And that was at the end of 2014. And I honestly haven't looked back since. I've been fortunate enough to to work with some major brands all around the world. I've worked with Pixar, I've worked with 
uh, Red Bull. I've worked with uh, Nordstrom. I've worked with uh, Paramount Pictures. Yeah, the list goes on. And and every time I get a job, every time I have somebody contacting me, I'm just like, I feel so extremely grateful that this has happened for me. But I also realized that because I create something so unique and eye-catching, that's what brands want. I yeah. come from an advertising background. So I kind of, I, I worked out like, hey, I'm doing something different. I know how to make it look a little bit quirky. Uh, I know how to sell. You know, I know what, I know the importance of brand guidelines. I, I know the understand the, the, what, like if an agency had to approach me and say, cool, here's the, here's the uh, corporate identity of our brand that we're trying to help, I guess, sell this new product. Can you come up with a series of animations for us? And I take it from concept all the way through to final animation. And that final animation could be a 15 second stint, which I guess gets, uh, it sits on Instagram and Facebook and whatever. And I've done TV ads as well. So that, that's essentially, I've created an origami agency. <laughs> I mean, and, yeah. and, when I get an opportunity, I work with as, as many other creatives as possible. I'm a one man show. So, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to, you, you want to grow something you need to, uh, you want to go, what, what's the saying? You want to, you want to go quick, go by yourself. If you want to go far, you need others. So yes. um, that's kind of how I've approached it as well. So that's, uh, amazing. that's, that's the business. That's the business that I have at the moment. Yeah. You know, it's all about standing out and being noticed because everyone's attention is so wrapped up in the moment and all these advertisements, all these um, text and SMS and pop-ups, and we are distracted and shiny object syndrome. And, and as a marketer and a brand, um, that's the whole key is getting that currency of attention. And, you know, like from a, a marketing perspective, you know, being able to have like a pattern interrupt is like, if someone were to, you know, clap their hands, jump on top of the, the desk, that would get someone's attention. Well, how do you do that in your marketing? Because like, how is your brand normally marketing? Oh, well, we do this Facebook campaign. We do that. And that's what all of your competitors do. But what is something that would make someone kind of stop and go, Oh, hold on. That's, that's origami and it's in the form of a stop motion and it's now that's interesting and you've gained their attention for that time now would it be um a four hour you know long video probably not but maybe 15 seconds 30 60 90 seconds i think that's really interesting that you started it off as a hobby you had brands going i wonder if this could help us and now i'm sure that you're able to even add nuances to this to say how else can I help this brand or a brand tell their story in a unique way to gain the attention of their target audience just for a few seconds longer? Exactly, and that—that's exactly I think what I've uh, what I've specialized in is I keep my my animations very simple, very clean, and once you see that, essentially a lot of them start very similarly. And even if you don't know what origami is, watching a piece of paper slide into the screen on a white or, or clean background, and then you in front of your eyes, you can see it's real and you can see it turning into whatever, a, a yeah. rabbit, a building or whatever. And, and then a story kind of unfolding and then pointing to like, and this is kind of what we're selling. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, you're creating content for brands, and it needs to have uh, it needs to have some sort of purpose behind it. Um, but I think I think something else I've I've been able to help brands with is help them capture uh, the audience with a bit of story. You know, and and you do that by either creating a character or a series of pieces of content, short form content. I think I've I've I've, I've gotten really good at creating short form content so anything between 15 and 30 seconds something that because i mean how long are we on our phones for you open up your phone if something doesn't catch your eye in the first i don't know 1.45 seconds yep. then you know you, you're on to the next thing so yeah it's it, it has to be quick it has to be punchy and you can you can tell the story towards the end of it but initially it has to be like whoa and in my case it's you know watching a piece of paper come in and then it's like whoa this piece of paper now is a palm tree or a paper jet and the paper jet is turning into a dragon or whatever. I mean, geez, for, for lack of a better, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, but, it's almost uh, endless. And, and it's, and if you, it's almost like if you think about the campaign through the lens of gaining attention, maybe it is that first 15 second pop of attention. That's that's with, you know, X, Y, Z brand. And it's this origami doing this one thing. And it's like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And then maybe there's this little button or a, you know, Hey, follow the journey of the, you know, origami pig in his journey down 
whatever, what's the next step in his story? And maybe then that becomes a 30 or 40 second snippet. And then that leads to, it's it's almost like the uh, old books that we read as kids. Like if you want the character to go in the cave, flip to page 27, if you want him to go across the sea. So I, it's all about attention. It's all about you being unique. And in origami tends to be something that is like, now that's curious. And I think that that's where you you've really captured something, but you said something that is so important here that in marketing is that storytelling, story selling people don't want to be sold something. They want to experience and be part of this story. Well, how can a brand tell a unique aspect of their story and, and wrap it up into a unique experience? And that's what you're able to, to do for them. That's really powerful. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's pretty much how I go about it. And I'm in the process now of trying to uh, collaborate with as many um, online artists as well. I'm, I'm collaborating with the, with the virtual reality artist uh, mm. and augmented reality. So, you know, the, 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 the sco- as, as technology comes up and, you know, with the whole rise of, of all the AI tools that are coming up, I'm also, you know, I, I try and stay as uh, as as informed on those fronts because i know that like with all the stuff that's coming at you how do i blend how do i blend what i've created whether it's animation or origami or whatever the case is with what's coming and how to create new and engaging stories um and yes at the end of the day i need to eat so for me it's it's predominantly brand focused but you know if at some point there is a, a be it a feature film or uh, some sort of series of some kind of Netflix series, YouTube series, whatever the case is, that does come my way. I would, that would that I think for me uh, would be something really, really um, interesting to do because it, it's still part of what I do, but it's now telling full on stories. Yes, you know, you think about where can where can it go? You know, origami is unique and fresh for a period of time. That might be two to three years until so many other people start using it, then it's like, okay, that's, that's, you know, uh, you know, commonplace now, but that might be a, a long runway still. And then you start doing, like you mentioned, VR and augmented, Ooh, that adds an element to now this origami storytelling. And then now we can look at, to see what AI is going to do. Where do you see, you know, like three and four steps down the road, where do you see with some of the AI technology and VR, where do you see your, you know, place in that, that you can bring to brands to keep them fresh? Well, I think, you know, having, you know, if if it's a brand that has associated themselves with some sort of, be it an origami figure or something that's animated, because essentially, you know, it's, I can animate paper, but because I'm a stop motion animation um, artist, it's you can animate pretty much anything, but it's how that world exists and, and what happens. I mean, essentially, a, imagine you have a virtual reality uh, world where they w- walk into this room and it, everything is just paper. It's just these little paper characters yeah. and it's these, uh, you know, these which you can interact with. They can talk to you. You can, you know, have <laughs> chat GPT linked to them and they can answer questions for you. So you mm-hmm. could essentially create this whole world. And it, although, you know, it, origami, does like you said at the beginning is something kids do and it's it's a very um i guess young thing it is um th- there is that childlike nature that it brings out when you do see a, a, something folded or a paper or something um but it doesn't need to be that it's it's just it is an art form and it is something that uh, can be used in many different ways it makes sense to do it for something slightly more um i guess accessible to kids because they get it but i mean a lot of the brands i worked with are it's they're not selling stuff to kids you know yeah. it's it's that but you know back to your question i think that there there is a lot of scope for um for how any of that would work in in the ar space and yeah and and with ai uh, the new tools that are we we are just like at the very beginning of, yeah. of a very interesting journey i feel and how things look now in terms of you know virtual virtually real worlds and um, augmented worlds you know us interacting through our devices with the outside world uh, there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff going on, and I'm looking very forward to to working with with all these new uh, tools. Yeah, I think uh, you you hit the nail on the head. We're we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Who knows where it can all go? But when you layer in proven marketing strategy, like knowing how to solve a certain problem for a target audience, knowing how to tell that in a story format, and then using some of these unique ways to capture attention and 
not only capture, but maintain the attention. Now that brand is able to connect with their audience like never before. So when you are saying that you're on the cusp of AI and VR and augmented and all of these things, that tells you that tells uh, people that you're a lot more than just a paper folder, right? So you're using that and you're watching for how we can then take it to the next level and the next level. I think that is what makes this so exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that comes with collaboration because I've learned, that, like, exactly as I said earlier, you can't go too far by yourself. But collaborating with, because there's a, there's a lot of people doing some very interesting stuff. The, the guys working or people working in the, I guess, the 3D space, so 3D modeling, 3D characters, uh, 3D films, that that is, you know, that's a very big industry. But they are automatically going to be able to plug into those worlds, those 3D worlds. So how do you bring a more real element into it? And that's essentially where an artist like myself would um, would uh, contribute because it's taking real world objects uh, which have been created with my hands be it an origami fox or rabbit whatever the case is and taking that into a world that is now digital although it is yep. real so yeah you kind of breaking a couple of dimensional walls there but yeah that's that's essentially where i see this going that is amazing. Well, I think this is so neat, Ross, that you stumbled into it, and then now you have, are now carving out a distinct segment of how you serve brands, and I think it is so spectacular. So if someone is interested in learning more and reaching out and connecting with you to maybe brainstorm a project, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you? Yeah, so uh, my website, you can look. You go onto Google and just look for White on Rice. White on Rice is the brand name that I've created. Uh, the URL is white-onrice.com or alternatively search for White on Rice on or White on Rice Origami on, uh, on Instagram. Um, I have a Facebook page as well, but those are predominantly the, the best places to find me. Um, if you can't find anything, just search uh, White on Rice Origami and I'll be the first, I guess, 10 hits on Google. <laughs> awesome. uh, but yeah, looking forward to, to hearing from anyone who just wants to chat or just to see uh, if there's any, any collaboration that can happen. Excellent. Well, Ross, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.